try again. <laughs> try again, Jay. If only they knew. If only they knew. They only see the end product, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say, before we start this intro, it is now 11.02 in the a.m. And I think Jay arrived here at 10 o'clock. That uh, doesn't sound that long, does it? 10 oh, o'clock? No, no, it's 12.28. It's 12 I was looking at the <laughs> was, time was on my <laughs> screenshot. 11.02. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, shit, that was a long hour. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> half 12, long. bro, two and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> two and a half hours, that's yeah. more like it. Oh, we've, had, we've had two power cuts. Oh, we've had a me. I've been up and down the garden <laughs> to the house <laughs> to get leads and charges and whatever else. Anyway. Milos texted me and said, uh, get his cardio up. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, you bastard. Uh, anyway, welcome back. This is episode five of the Beautiful yes. Struggle podcast. Welcome Thank you back. very much for your patience for this episode. Obviously, we had a bit of a, a hiatus. Yes. Good word, isn't it? Hiatus for the festive period. Yeah. And a lot, lots changed, a lot to talk about. So we've got a good episode coming for you. I am very, very sure about that. Jam packed, hopefully. Um, Christmas. Well, before Christmas, Olympia. Yeah. How was it? It's good, mate, but I'm still struggling because yeah. I got the Vegas Lurgy. I think mm. they they release some like gas. You know, I didn't know the casinos blow um, oxygen into the casinos. Oh, I keep awake. it awake on the on the bandits and that. Yeah, and, and obviously all the bright lights in the casinos. Then you re- you realise everything in a casino. The design of it is obviously designed to keep people in the casino because the the out lie in restaurants and bars yeah are already dark ah. so the light is like you know drawing into the light but anyway they pump oxygen into the casino through the air conditioning units as well don't they yeah um but aside from that yeah everybody who i know who went to vegas got ill i have seen yeah and i know everybody in the uk as well because it's christmas and generally I, I i'm a firm believer i think we might have said this before but i'm a firm believer that your um, immune system is attached to your mentality um, in your central nervous system so what do people do at Christmas they relax what yeah. do you do after a contest you relax relax yeah. so it's like ah, and the immune system's like ah, what an opportunity to strike let's yeah. get this motherfucker yeah. <laughs> oh fuck that I, unfortunately I, I don't know about the uh, Vegas loogie yeah. because uh, I wasn't there was I uh, 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 still sour about it mate that's where Sambo comes in <laughs> <laughs> yeah it does next I'll, year Jay next year yeah I'll, I'll be honest mate that week hmm. That week when you went to um, Vegas, not just because you went, but oh, it, it was like one of those weeks I was on a full downer. Really? Yeah, it was like, we talked the other week about putting good vibes out, getting yeah. you know good energy mm. back. I was not putting good vibes out at all. <laughs> just because it's like, oh, oh, maybe three or four times now that I should have been there doing work and it just yeah. didn't come off. Um and yeah, I'm a li- not that I'm, I'm not sour about it at all, but uh, I did feel like I felt a little mental shift that week where I was like, oh, do you know what? I'm fucking, I'm, I'm a bit p- pissed off here. Yeah. Ka- and Carla took the brunt of it. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, and then I tore my hamstring as well that same week. So that week was shit. Yeah. It was a bad week for me. But again, you, you kind of, st- I, I will overthink that scenario and start thinking, well, did I pull my hamstring because I felt that way? Not when everything's going good for you. Sometimes people say, when everything's going good, something goes bad. But in the back of their mind, they're always... I know people who are expecting something bad to happen because things are good. Yeah. They're not just thinking things are good and I'm going with that feeling. There's always a common denominator and a a kind of like agonist-antagonist scenario. So maybe if you went to Olympia and you trained through Olympia, you wouldn't pull your hamstring. Or even if you didn't have the old sour grapes, maybe it'd be different, but... Anyway, it's all hindsight, isn't it? So Hindsight's a beautiful thing. Good thing is, if we're looking at it as a positive, it wasn't a bad tear, was it? Was it? A- no, it wasn't a bad tear. It was. Uh, it was a minor. Just mm-hmm. I, I did it a couple of years back, so I knew it wasn't a bad one because it was a similar kind of feeling. Yeah. Um, I spoke to Jordan on it, and he said just kind of train through it, but just keep yeah. getting blood in there. So uh, I've been training. Like, like I did say, I wouldn't train legs till January, but I have yeah. been training legs. Just uh, going easy on the old hamstring, and and then when I went out for a night out over Christmas with the boys, I slipped on the dance floor, pulling off some moves, and tore it a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, don't go dancing, kids. Don't go dancing. You can't well, be a bodybuilder and a dancer. I, get, I take it you was drunk, Jay. I was fucked up, bro. Yeah, 
<laughs> and this is the thing. When, we, when we're drunk, I remember from years ago, obviously nothing recent, but I remember when I used to get drunk, I used to think I was the best dancer. And I wish, I wish it was like more this day and age now where everything was filmed. Because mm. I'm sure I could look back on some videos and say, yeah, you're definitely not a good dancer. They're not a good dancer. No. I'm an amazing dancer. I'm putting that out there, don't care. When you're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, right. the first time Carla met me, I was fucking spinning on my head break dancing. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I used to do a little bit, but uh, not, not now. But <laughs> Obviously not now. Spinning on a head shit. I, I had a, I had a good go at the old break dancing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had a oh, good, good go at it. I remember there used to be a, a bar in Derby called Dogma, and um, I remember going to Dogma once, and they used to it used to be that kind of bar where they used to have the midweek, not the weekends, yeah, because midweeks are a bit quieter. But they used to have all the break dancers go, and they used to battle each other. Yeah, and they used to be obviously all be in a circle, and it was quite a good vibe to be fair. They're good, mate. They're like a hip hop <laughs> night and that. Yeah. That's, that's kind of where I kind of grew up in those kind mm. of places like so uh, I was like yeah I'll jump in and then I'll just throw some moves out and then I'll be on this next dance contest <laughs> not can you imagine this big, big guy in the middle of a circle <laughs> fucking dancing like, like Peter Crouch like fucking douse him <laughs> yeah, Peter Long Crouch gone. doing the fucking uh, the robot, the robot the yeah. <laughs> that's all yeah right I'm off guys see you later thank you mm. oh wow so yeah, Christmas then. Um, did you? What did you do? Do you, I think you had a? I'm sure you had a bit of a shindig a couple of days before Christmas. Yeah, I had a few friends around yeah. the house on Friday. We played some games. I had a bad back because that's one thing I did at Christmas. I taught. I like locked my back up. I've had problems with my back for years. Uh, back went into spasm before the Olympia. Before we travelled, and then it was okay. Travelled. Olympia was fine. Slept on a really soft mattress in in Vegas for the whole week. So I was like flitting between the bed and the sofa in the room, which was a firmer like sofa. So we had the best like sleep while I was away. Got home, back on my mattress, I had the best night's sleep. I was like, oh, it's wicked. No pain in my back, nothing. Well, that day, my back decided to spasm again. Oh, no. Like bad. It was like for the whole week. So I think we got from Vegas on about the 20th, 21st, 22nd, somewhere around there. For that week, all through Christmas, my back was, back was fucked. And Kate decided to get this game on the 23rd on the Friday. And I've seen this on your story, I think. It's yeah. just called Monkey Business or something. Right. So you got this blow-up monkey tail that you strapped around your waist that went down your back and curled up through your legs. So you got to squat and like hook these uh, like D-handles off the floor. Yeah. Well, obviously, my back was like that. And you could see when I was doing it on someone filming me on Instagram. I, it looked terrible. You were like a beginner squat. Yeah. So that didn't do me any favours for my back. Um, but one thing about Vegas is I would say seven days in Vegas is far too much. Yeah? If you go next year, sorry, when you go next year, James, this year. When? When you go this just year. Just put it out there. When? Well, it's not in Vegas, it's in Orlando. So not, and it's earlier as well, isn't it? So that... November. It, there's much more chance of me going this year. Yeah. Just because it's not falling in line with like Christmas and Carla's yeah, yeah, birthday. Yeah. But yeah, go on. What were you saying? Seven days in Vegas. <sighs> Don't go for seven days. I mean, Orlando. So the, the people from Vegas... You've got your Vegas crowd, haven't you? Like your Jay Cutler's, your Flexus, oh, yeah, people yeah. who live there that, you know, and other people that think um, the Olympia is, or Vegas is the home of the Olympia. They're like, they hate the fact that it's moving away from Vegas. Mm. I imagine if, you know, when I used to be in UK BFF and uh, the British finals was in Nottingham, I was loving life. Perfect, yeah. Yeah, and then the people that had to travel, maybe that's a similar scenario. So yeah, I would want it to stay in Nottingham or Vegas. But I don't. They're they're saying that there's not much to do in Orlando apart from Disney, which I think is probably the case. Yeah. But even still, four or five days, and because it was so close to Christmas, I think people would have maybe gone for a week and realised how expensive America seems to be now, um, particularly in like tourist areas, like we was on the Vegas Strip. Mm -hmm. So he was paying like six dollars for a bottle of water that wasn't even as big as this. It was like. 750 mil, six dollars. That's madness. Crazy. Uh, medications, deodorants. When I've been to America in the past, like last year I traveled a lot, I realized that just um, general toiletries, food, meat, you know, fluids. Um, this is an example of like, how much the cost is kind of higher than the UK. Mm. And we think we've got it bad. Um, massage in the UK, what, 35, 50 quid? You go to anybody who has got a good reputation in the US that works out of a gym like um, there's a guy called John Beadle who works out of Dragon's Lair 
I think your consultation is about $150, $200. And then they want $150, $200, $250 sometimes per treatment. Do you get a happy ending with that massage as well? Or, uh... I don't think you do. I think you get a slap <laughs> in the face on them and a slap in the face on the bank. Fucking hell. <laughs> That's kind of one of the... Because this year, obviously, work was discussed about me going over. Yeah. And then people were saying... Why don't you just go over yourself, yeah. foot the bill, pay for your flights and accommodation, do some networking over there, yeah. maybe pick up a couple of shoots to kind of even out the yeah, the yeah. outgoings. And I was like, I shouldn't have to do that, man. No. Like I'm, I've earned my stripes in the game. To, yeah, yeah. to like work was discussed. I couldn't then go back and then say, oh, I'll just fucking pay three, four grand or whatever it was going to cost. Because yeah. I don't know if you know him personally. I know you, you've, you've got one of his pictures printed up in your gym, Victor. He's yeah, been yeah. doing all the content now for, um, yeah. I'm not sure if you saw him over there, but he's been doing a lot of like, stage content. Yeah. So me and Victor have become close since Arnold's and we were going to meet up over in Vegas when I was thinking about going across and he went across on his own back. He just went across. He said, I'll just do work over there and hope he doesn't mind me saying this when he's watching no. this. But um, he got cock blocked. Really? He got cock blocked because obviously he does a certain thing. Yeah. With with what he does in terms of his content, yeah. there's already people there that have done it there f for years, and I'm not sure who pulled the strings, yeah. but he couldn't do the work that he wanted to do over there. Yeah. So he was going over there with the mindset that, all right, I'm paying out three grand yeah. to go across, but I'll earn this back from the um, stage shots I'm going to be able to sell on. Yeah, yeah. Mate, they had him up in the fucking back. Really? They wouldn't let him, yeah. Well, Proper blackboard. Even if he was like, trying to buy a media pass to get... Close. Cock blocked. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, see, that that's the thing I've noticed about, you know, competing in life in general. Mm -hmm. It's a case of what not um, what you know, who you know, right? It is. And I'm thankful to have a good relationship with the, the guys in the UK, like me yeah. and Ian have been speaking today. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, and, and Victor's actually got a relationship with Ian as well. Yeah, yeah. So there's me thinking, like, oh, because I'm, I'm in with two bros and the I IFBB in, in the UK, if I go across Olympia, I'm going to be treated as one of the boys. Yeah. But that just shows. This is a good question not. for you, Jay, um, because you just kind of touched on it as well with yourself and Victor. I would say, from my experience, like over the past few years, you're definitely one of the best videographers in the UK, for sure. And I'd say, Victor, one of the best photographers for bodybuilding that I've, that I've seen. Mm -hmm. But both photography and videography are becoming like more and more flooded with people trying to do it. Yeah. So you've got these, I would class them as entry level videographers and photographers mm -hmm. doing packages, selling things at a much cheaper rate. And obviously, you know, what's your view on you're the best at something which obviously comes at a cost because you've earned your stripes and you charge more. What's your kind of view of these people coming in? Is it like anything else? Are they going to get like found out and uh, people are going to kind of come back round? Is it a process where people are going to perhaps try and save themselves a bit of money and then realise that they can't because yeah. they need the content to be right? Um, yeah, this is actually something I was kind of thinking about talking about it anyway in my mind because, yeah. again going back to the Olympia but and this isn't like to offend if anyone's watching this that has a camera and does the same job that I do this is this isn't me trying to cause offense but with the time that I've spent in the industry I've seen guys come in yeah. and I've seen guys go mm -hmm. um and it's just like there's always going to be the next man coming in with a camera that th thinks they can do mm -hmm. what they've been watching me do yeah. for the last six, seven years or whatever. Yeah. And there have been guys that have come in and have had that kind of attitude and have become good friends of mine now yeah. and they're killing it. And they all know who they are because I'm not going to mention any names, but I speak to them on a regular. Um, but then there are other guys that will come in, they'll get one or two good gigs yeah. and then suddenly they're, they're the shit. Yeah. But the fact is they can justify being the monkey with a camera that's going to run around for 50 quid or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, like when I look at it, I know what I bring to the table with, with Magic Eye. And I also know what these guys, guys bring to the table. If you sat us side by side and then we just listed and, and put, put our work, our portfolio, the grind that I know I'm capable of doing. Yeah. And then if we said to the client, 
it's, there's no difference. Who would you take? I know that that plane ticket's going to be mine all yeah. day. Um, but unfortunately, I can't justify doing it for what these guys can do it for because they're 19 with a camera. They've got no foods, um, no mouths around tables to fill with food. Yeah. They've got, I've got a roof. They've got the, the commitment that that I've got. So unfortunately, I've got a I've got a, a line here, like a threshold yeah. that I'm willing to go down to in terms of pricing. Yeah. Um, and I can't go below that. Whereas these guys can go, well, it's a week before Christmas. I go, fuck all on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, fuck it. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... I think that's an important point to note as well for like the people watching and listening. I think you've got to like know your own worth. And that's something I struggled with early on. I was doing diet plans for 25 quid when I started, but that was in, um, you know, in relation to my experience level as well. So that mm. was fine. But then the battle is when I started becoming more experienced and started doing seminars and camps and, you know, even with my online coaching, how much am I worth? What do I charge? And for a long time, I was looking at what other people were charging. Yeah. Trying to compete. But the message is you shouldn't really compete because you are you. You're your own set of skills. Yeah. You sound like Liam Neeson now. <laughs> um, and you should be able to kind of start learning where your worth is in the industry that you're in. Yeah. Um, and I think I've, I've like got my worth on lockdown now. And you'll be the same. People will very often undervalue your worth because they'll undervalue their personal investment. Yeah. They don't mind buying the newest trainers, newest tracksuit, newest jewellery, newest games and TVs. I've just actually been uh, browsing Instagram and I had a client that a couple of months ago said he was struggling for money. So he's going to knock coach on the head for a bit. I just saw he's got a nice shiny PS5. <laughs> It's 600 quid. <laughs> Come on, man. 600 quid worth of games. Be subtle gaming. about it. <laughs> so, where's your priorities? Um, are your priorities in line with uh, your values and your, your worth kind of systems for things? Yeah. I, I, I'm quite comfortable in knowing where I sit in the game now. In, in all honesty, I could probably, and I'm worth more than I charge. But yeah. it's such a competitive and saturated yeah. pocket of the industry that I sit mm. in. Um, I've got a, I've, I've got, kind of got like a, a midway kind of price rate. Yeah. rate. You've got to find that balance. Yeah, where I'm happy taking that. The client is happy having regular work done. Yeah. I'm active. That's how I've built Magic Eye. Yeah. Um, and you know, that's like I said, they've, I've seen them come and go, man. Yeah. I've seen them come and go, and they not that they'll get found out, but they'll just get to a point where they'll, they'll burn out and they'll be like, Fuck, I can't keep doing this for yeah. this because they, they're going to be getting, you know, if they're, if they're younger, yeah. I know what I wanted when I was 19 wasn't the same as what I wanted when I was 25. So by the time they get to 25, the chances are that novelty of being yeah. the monkey with a backpack and a camera. No offense intended. No, no. But it is that because yeah. I've I've been there. Like I've, yeah. I've been there, and I've done my fifty quid yeah. get photo shoots and video shoots. And you've got to start somewhere, but you've also got to know where you sit yeah. in the game. Yeah, definitely. There's only so much hours in a day. Yeah. And if you're trying to gain experience, great. You're doing it cheap. You're going to be busy. Um, but try getting better at something and getting busier. How is your work going to improve if you've got the same amount of hours? You're doing more jobs, you've got less time. Yeah, less time um, to improve on what you do. Yeah, if anything, like yourself, you have the ability to charge more, which means you can spread your workload, which means you put more time into the editing, which is obviously a key part of your business. Yeah. Um, but it comes with time. But I, I, I've noticed a lot of, people these days and I think it's a sign of you know it's the economy the economy is bad and people are struggling so um, I'm all for people trying to make a living for themselves and 100% and yeah things. but there's definitely in all kind of uh, walks of businesses and, and forms more people at that kind of entry level coming through yeah and it, with Instagram now We've got a marketing tool at fingertips. Free marketing. Yeah. You can make yourself look like the man. Yeah. I mean, I was laughing with Katie last night. We was on the, on the sofa. I was flicking through Instagram. I was like, this guy. <laughs> this guy. I can't believe this guy's a coach now. <laughs> I can't believe this guy's doing a training tips reel. Yeah. I was watching it. I was like, man. 
you know, you got to kind of laugh, but you, at the same time, you got to give him a bit of clout for trying. Yeah, yeah, um, you have. So for me, I'm a bit torn because I'm like, these motherfuckers. But then I'm like, I was one of them motherfuckers one day. That's it. You, you, you're going to, at first, that first reaction is you fucking little cunt. Yeah. And then secondly, like, hang on. Yeah. I was the same person. Yeah. And I'll give everyone their fucking, you know, all day long. If you, if I can see you grafting, then, mm. you you know, you're going to get kudos off me all day. But <clears throat> it's like, it's how, it's how you go about your business. Yeah. Like if, yeah. If you put in these, like, you know, the term that's really pissed me off in 2022, yeah. which we need to leave in 2022, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> goat. Goat, yeah. The goat. Yeah. The greatest of all time. The guy's yeah. been doing it six months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what, that's <clears throat> what I, I think that's a great point because, like you say, goat. When you think of goat, you think of Kobe, you think of um, Jordan. Yeah. People with that level. That used to be goat to us, didn't it? Yeah. But who's, who's the goat these days? Someone who's. Like you say in your game, hold a camera for six months and got, got some yeah. great stuff. Or a coach who's been the coach of the year, name-wise, uh, yeah. in the media. I can think of a few. And that's not saying they're not good at what they do. It's it's just you've got a that title. I don't even feel, when people call me the GOAT, I don't even feel like I've earned that yet. you got a, I don't know, the GOAT status is something like you've been doing it for 20 years. Exactly. Maybe. You've got to you put those at years in at the top and consistently at the top. That's when you can start throwing that term out yeah. and chucking the little goat emoji on top of your reposted reel or I whatever. I think these, these goats are actually, we could like shave the G off and just call them oats. <laughs> oats. <laughs> you can have a bowl of oats <laughs> and then it'd be a reward system where they level up. That goat status is like over here. What, what's a baby goat? I don't even know. I don't know. It's, it's Billy Goat, isn't it? Or is it Billy, is it Billy Goat? It's a boy goat. <laughs> <laughs> Think I've opened a can of fucking worms here. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I've got to, I've got to he's, go- he's Googling. So it's going to be a quick one, hopefully. I nearly said lamb, but obviously that's a fucking that's baby sheep. And yeah. I should know about sheep because I'm from Wales. What's the baby goat called? A kid. A kid. A so, kid, yeah. yeah. We're going to stop on a fucking baby emoji. These and kids. These kids. <laughs> Quality. <laughs> right, Jay. I know, um, obviously, because it's episode five, you wanted to uh, do some top fives. Yeah, so I thought, like, I was trying to think of themes of what we could do these podcasts. So I thought episode five, we could do like top fives. Top five goats. Um, top five goats. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with it being like the new year, I thought, well, we'll go personal on it first with yep. like maybe five things that you're taking in or you want to change or add into your life in 2023. Yep. Same for me. And then we can just, freestyle some top fives of other things yes. um i've got three and a half minutes left on the time of year yeah um, we haven't got anyone in the background taking pictures today to reset the camera so i'm gonna you can take care of business here for a sec yeah, okay. of, of one of your um top five things you're taking into the new year okay and i'll go and reset the cameras mm. right so first thing for me this year that i really want to kind of like go to town on put some time into invest money into and improve you know full circle is my gym so obviously I bought my gym with the wife let's not forget uh, Katie on this Uh, we got the gym in 2017 so we actually bought the gym in November December 2016 but opened the gym in January 2017 to the public so it's open 17 18 and 19 to the public and obviously 2020, we all know what happened in 2020 with the lockdowns, etc. So during 2020, um, I think it was during the third lockdown, which was towards the end of the year, me and Katie just discussed the pros and cons of getting the gym back open. Or do the overheads kind of work out where it's beneficial to close the gym and have it as a private facility? Um, because I'll be honest with you, it wasn't making a ton of money from the gym. It was kind of paying for itself. Um, it was covering lifestyle costs because you'd buy your food shopping, you'd pay for your fuel and stuff out, out the business. So it was serving a purpose, but the staff bill was like 35K a year. The stress of owning a business where it had to be open 80 hours a week and you had to staff it and you know repair equipment and just try and keep everyone happy and invest and make it better as well was crazy and this is something at the time that I don't think anybody kind of understood and thought about mine and Katie's deeper 
broader reasons for closing the gym. They were just like, oh, these guys are just thinking about themselves, selfish, yeah. blah, blah, blah. I remember you had quite a lot yeah, of flack on that social media, wasn't it? Because it is, um, you know, it's a local gym. It's been around for years. It's got a great reputation and it's kind of indented in the, the history of Ilkeston, the town it's in. And people have been training there for 30 years and, and you know, it's part of their growing up and part of their blood. So I can imagine people would feel strongly about it. But, you know, if we think about others, you know, think about my stress levels, my lifestyle, um, think about the person I am as well. I'm a nice person. I try and treat everyone I want to treat myself, treat people with respect. Um, people was calling me selfish and saying all kind of bad Yeah, things. it's madness. Like, Motherfuckers. Anyway, long story short, the gym was closed because it was very conducive to my progression as an athlete, as a professional bodybuilder, to be able to concentrate in that environment where you can really have no distractions. Um, but obviously, at the back end of last year, I decided probably prematurely that I was going to step away from competing altogether. So that is kind of like on a, <laughs> a tilt. We'll speak about that in another podcast, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, but either way, I wanted to put more time back into the gym, open the gym back up, but not have the stress I had before when it was open to the public fully um, and compete with every other gym around that's 30, 45, 40 quid a month to go and train at and abuse the equipment. <laughs> yeah. And have you guys in there that aren't serious that just want to chat and, and have a catch up after their working day. I wanted a facility where I had like-minded, serious people that wanted to come and improve their physique. They might want to compete, but they value their training and they value the environment they train in. So the first thing I want to do this year is make my gym kind of like the place to train for the experienced trainer, the person that values their training and their progression. Um, so there's loads of new kit coming. I've got a kit coming from Prime, from Watson, from Panatta, um, Cybex, Hammer. Um, I just ordered some like new attachments from Jinpin. And, um, oh, plenty of D-handles for the fucking D-handle wankers. <laughs> We've already got a few D-handle wankers. And I'm not calling wankers, I'm just repeating what Jay said. But... We've got a WhatsApp group and there's already a few guys that get rinsed in the comments on the WhatsApp group for um, wanting D-handles. And the, the, one, se- one person says the other day, give a shout out to Riz. Riz um, likes to, you know, be the joker. Mm. And he was like, oh, these boys are more excited about the new D-handles than the fucking prime new £5,000 hamstring equipment. <laughs> Which is probably true. <laughs> But um, yeah, that's without talking for too long. That's the thing that I want to put a lot of time to this year. Yeah, the gym. Working, I think it'd be good. When you were talking there as well, <clears throat> just um, look looking at where I live. Like we've got like um, bike park wheels, and this is sounds fucking random, set, but we've got bike park wheels, yeah. and I know like a lot of people come from everywhere to to go to there because it's obviously in Wales. We're full of fucking mountains, yeah, yeah. and this bike park is like renowned, yeah. and a lot of people are now starting like Airbnbs around that area. And I'm oh, just yeah. thinking like for you, with the vision you've got for the gym becoming like a hub for bodybuilding yeah. in this area. Um, you know, that's something you could even look at as well. Like, like down further down the line is like yeah. Airbnb, like a weekend, mm. fucking training weekend or whatever. Get yeah. get people come up on Airbnbs. That's um, that's definitely one of my plans as well. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I've got my website up now, uh, which has got everything on. I think it just needs tweaking a bit because there's a lot of information on that site. It needs condensing down a little bit. It's a bit clearer for people to navigate through, which I'm going to do this year. But I have a section on there that's called Train with the Giant. Um, and I don't want to make, I don't want to be a PT. Hmm. I don't want to do personal training sessions. I want to train with these people. I want them to come down and have an experience. So I've done these experience packages on where they can come and train with me for an hour. Yeah. They can stay with me for half a day, right up to they can come and stay with me for five days and I'll prep the meals and show them how to live and eat and sleep and breathe and train. That's sick, man. Bodybuilder. That's good, that. But we go back to the value system, it comes at a cost. Mm. I'm a professional bodybuilder. My time is valuable because I have a family and everything else. I'm not going to let people come and train with me and eat with me for nothing. Yeah. I'm not going to impart my knowledge on them for nothing either. So it comes at a cost. Um, and I, I guess some people will value that cost, but 
probably be the minority. It will be, unfortunately, but the ones that appreciate it will fucking get the most out of it yeah, at the end of the day. Because the other guys, that they're just not going to take enough from it anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's good. That's good, man. Um, well, I guess for one of my things that I'm going to take into the new year, if we're going, because I was just going to do quick fire, but you've gone on a big deep dive. That was a deep one. That was a deep one. How quick fire the others? <laughs> I'll, um, the, the biggest thing for me then in terms of like business with with Magic Eye is to continue keep doing what I'm doing in terms of like building relationships, the content. There's a few new clients I've got kind of in the DMs and we're going back and forth on content for this year. Uh, but the biggest thing for me is like, the the boring back office stuff and yeah. and really sort my shit out and get my yeah, yeah. get my shit together there and that goes from like the website to the admin side of things um i'll drive up and down the country all day long and do these long ass fucking 24 five hour days yeah. but for me to sit there and do all that type of stuff i'm a slacker yeah. i like to be completely honest i'm a slacker with it so uh, the back end of last year it's been a constant thought of just Next year, get your shit together yeah. and sort that out, you know. And you'd think, being this many years into it now, yeah, it would be sorted. Yeah. Unfortunately, not. Because I've been too focused on the the building that side of it, yeah. which, yeah, obviously that counts, because if that's not there, yeah. there's no back office stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, unfortunately, I haven't been able to, to juggle those things. So that is, like, number one on yeah. the list. Sort your back cool. office. Sort your shit out, mate. But I think in that case as well is we, we get a bit complacent with that sort of stuff because we've we've got by for so long. It's just like, I can still get by. Yeah. It's all right. It, it, we we get by. Yeah. The accountant's yeah. sorted. The tax is sorted at yeah. the end of the year. Could be a lot better, but I'd rather focus on something that's going to yeah. be visually more productive. Visually more productive. And yeah. yeah. So that's that's my that's top of my list, mate. Wicked. <laughs> top of my list. Quick one for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to be, I want to bring in, This I mean, it's going to be a quick one, it's going to be a quick sure. one. Sure. I'm just trying to like explain, obviously I'm torn at the minute because there's potential that I could still be allowed in the Gladiators. Yeah. Or potential to move on to the next stage, which would be a physical audition. So the other side of this, which we've not really spoke about yet, is me competing this year, potentially. Um, whatever I do, I want to bring the family in on what I do more because what I've done in the past is I've done a solo sport. It's just me. I'll go and eat. I'll go and train. I'll go and compete. But when I came away from competing last year, I said I wanted to be a better husband and father. And I think that doesn't mean I have to come away from the things I do. It no. just means I have to be a better husband and father. In a sense, I have to be more present and bring those people in and along with me. So that's what I want to do. Yeah, just make it a conscious thought. Yeah. And then constantly. Yeah. Because before you know it, the more you make that a conscious thought, yeah. it's going to be fucking second nature for it to be yeah. that, to become the norm of them being in that. Because it's going to be feel really weird yeah. for you to do the same thing you've done for however many years, yeah. but balancing and bringing those in. But then before you know it that's going to be the new thing and then you're thinking how the fuck did I ever do this on my own without the yeah, support of yeah. or doing this experience with these guys and I it's just little things you know I'm one of these where in prep when I get deep and I get um, you know I'm, I'm so zoned in and locked in I remember I will make my food and I will want to go out the way in my office and eat in peace mm, yeah with no one to the point where I've had people come up to me in the gym before I've had Katie trying to talk to me before or the kids trying to talk to me before when I'm eating, I'm like getting angry, I'm getting stressed, I'm getting frustrated because this is my time. Yeah. <laughs> and it shouldn't be like that. It doesn't nah, have to be like that. So nah. that, yeah. I think it's just me taking a look at myself and saying, come on, man, sort your shit out. No, I like it. I like it. Uh, my one's not as deep as that. Yeah. <laughs> Reply on WhatsApp. Yeah, yeah. Quick. Yeah. That's, that's, that's another one because... <laughs> This year, for some reason, I've developed this habit of seeing a WhatsApp come through and thinking, right, I leave it on unread to deal with when I get two minutes. Yeah. And then before you know it, it's fucking th Thursday and yeah. they sent it on Monday. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I need to be more um, proactive on messaging back. And on day six or whatever it is, is it the sixth or seventh? Eighth? Sixth. Eighth is Sunday. Sorry, sixth. Um, yeah, I'm replying to WhatsApps. 
You're going to check my WhatsApp now if I've replied to you in a... You know what I was checking? I was checking if you're a, a blue ticker oh. or a secret. Am I a blue ticker? You are a blue ticker, yeah. Oh, I didn't even realise. I used to be secret. A lot of people turn their read receipts off these days. Yeah. And I call it player mode. Player. Now, I know it's like for coaches or... I've never understood this. People who want to open a message but not let anybody know that they've read it. Mm. Because they want to decide when they want to reply. Well, why don't you just leave the message until you want to fucking open it? Yeah. But saying that, I have a bit of OCD where if I see a message coming through, I find it hard not to read it. So, I don't know. I have done, I have like read the message and then I'm thinking, oh, I need I need a bit longer to reply to this. Yeah. So I'll put it back to unread. Oh, can you do but that? Ju- yeah, but it just sits right. on fucking unread for three days, mate. Yeah. It's, it's so like even today, even just a, a subtle, because you can react to the, the message on WhatsApp yeah, you know, yeah. with the reactions, yeah. even a subtle react with a thumbs up, yeah, yeah. just to kind of close off that conversation, just so yeah. that I've not blanked you or yeah. ghosted you in any way, because I felt like I was ghosting people last year. Yeah. And it's probably <laughs> it's probably lost me jobs as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah it probably has. Definitely. Like, I haven't, I haven't like, fallen out with anyone over it, but it's yeah. probably because I didn't reply, Yeah, and I've just left the days and days and days. <clears throat> and I do it to my friends as well. Yeah. So, yeah, that's my next one. Yeah, but I'm, I'm like that as well. You're busy, you're on the go, you might be in the middle of your session, I'll do it when I finish. Yeah. And then you forget. It's easily done. Especially if it's a text, which is like, just not even like anything, if it's not even about anything, it's just like, yeah. just general fucking chit-chat. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I'm a bit flat out to chit-chat at the minute, but yeah, um, but yeah, that's my, that's my next one. I think that's one thing I can improve on, to be fair. Obviously, I am a person in an industry. And I know most of my clients will come to me for coaching because they know who I am. Probably all. And I've had this before where clients have tried to probably message me too much away from helping them with their diets and things, like on a personal level. Yeah. And I've always been quick to shut it down because, quite frankly, I ain't got loads of time if I let one client in, then I let 20, 30, 40 clients in. Mm. I'm just messaging people all day. Just about personal shit. Not, yeah. oh, I'm helping you with this squat or this bit <laughs> about your diet. Yeah. But I think there's a level to that where I should be probably more willing to conversate. Mm-hmm. So I'll try and be a bit more conversational with my clients on a level that just isn't coaching this year. So is that, an, is that one for you there? That's one for me, yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I put this idea out there and I haven't actually thought of five. I've got another one as well, Jay. Like you, I've got one on the back you, you can go, in, go for it while I think of one. Well, again, <coughs> okay, so this is my number four. This year, I want to use my diary. I buy a diary every year. I'm going to jump in on that one with you. I fucking yeah. use it. Crazy. I've put something in my diary this year and it's the dates that I'm having Harley. <laughs> so I'm picking Harley up next weekend and the weekend after and then... Yeah. I'm stalled because I'm waiting to hear back from Mutant. I said to you about traveling. Mutant are um, doing a content gathering exercise in Canada, end of Jan, start of Feb. Then February, I'm taking Katie away for her birthday. Um, Then the start of March is the Arnold's. Then April is FIBO. Then there's going to be something. May, we've got a holiday with the kids. That's something every month. So... Without you going into too much detail, yeah. when are you, if you are planning to compete, when does that happen this year? Right, with, without so, going too, too much into yeah, it. So I've discussed things with Milos. There's so many shows on the, on the calendar already. Yeah. The shows really start, um, there's, some in, there's some before, but the shows really start in July. Oh, all right. So it'd be after all that stuff, yeah. It goes July, there's Orlando, Portugal, Vancouver in Canada, um, Spain, Texas, Chicago. There's, there's fucking loads. I, I remember you telling me there was like a week after week, there's like yeah. loads on a bounce in there. So that means, this is what's like the problem at the minute because I want to start packing on the weight. I want to start putting more weight on um, because I do need to start my prep from about 3.30. At the minute, I'm 3.07. I will be doing more cardio before people start diving in on 
didn't want to get heavy again, blah, blah, blah. I'll be doing things differently, but this is like a massive conversation that we... Yeah, we, we can't... Can. Di- 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 deep dive. Deep dive. <laughs> <laughs> Into now. We can't do the deep dive. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I need to start putting on weight, but then in the back of my head, I've got... Gladiators might say, Jamie, you got an audition in March. Yeah. You need to be fit. So that completely goes against the grain with my plans to compete. But anyway, yeah, I would need to probably start dieting in April. April, yeah. So I've got four months. I need to oh. like pull the trigger on this um, mass gaining phase. You need to get going. Go for it, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll use the diary one because I've, I bought a diary yep. for the last two years and not fucking use it. I've got like my wall calendar with all my dates penciled out for sh- shoots and yeah. holidays and whatever else Carla wants to scribble on this saying don't book anything in. Yeah. Um, so yeah, diary, be a little bit more organised and I think that will then tie into the back office stuff that I also need to sort out. Yeah. So organisation there. Um, that's my third one. And then I'll say the fourth one is maybe see some more places because you're going to be travelling quite a bit to compete in. I might see if yeah. uh, the mutant want to fucking foot the bill and yeah, uh, that'd be wicked. maybe maybe do something. So, but I definitely want to take a few more countries off the list this yeah. year. That was like a... a a goal in the back of my head last year is to see a few new places and I did so I'll continue that for um, you for Portugal? this year didn't do Portugal I did uh, Toronto Dubai Tunisia uh, somewhere else can't think there was another place yeah but no I didn't do Portugal Portugal might be the one then Jay because mm. Portugal show I think will be good for me because uh, Presti's won Portugal the last two years. All oh, right, yeah. And I think my physique um, compares well to Presti because he's very um, aesthetic. Yes. And he's not the biggest guy. He's, you know, he's a very good bodybuilder. And he's, bi- he's a big guy. What I'm saying is I think we're comparable on size and shape and all this kind of stuff. Um, so that would be a good show if we can uh, link up on that one. Well, the conversations are happening yeah. with the... The guy's in charge, so we'll see what happens this year. But yeah, that'll be a that'll be a good one. Awesome. Um, number five number for you. Five. Number five. I'm proper fucking stuck with these. Mambo top five. number five. Well, one thing I want to do this year is I want to take Harley to a show abroad with me. Um, and again, that kind of ties into the one where I bring the family in. But that's a that's a personal goal that I want to take him to a show. Um, you know, if it was Texas, I want to take him to Texas and I want to spend that time with him whilst I'm in peak week, which is obviously been stressful in the yeah. past, but I think that'd be a challenge for, for me to um, manage that. But it would be a great opportunity to show him on a one-to-one level because it's never, I've never done it one-to-one. It's that'd be very been, cool for him. He's come, yeah, with the family. But cool for both of you. Yeah, but he's at that age now where he can, he's old enough to understand things. So, I, you know, if I could... Introduce him to people, take him backstage. Yeah, you know, sit him in the crowd, and hopefully, he'd like, engage and not just want to be on his face. Dad, this is so boring. Because <laughs> yeah. there's a potential that, that could happen, um, but it's something I want to try. Uh, have there been to any shows that you've done, like in the, yeah, the UK shows? He, he was like a lot younger, mm. so I remember he came to the Zach Khan Classic when um, 2015. Fuck so yeah! So he was he, probably one of the last shows he came to, and he would have been yet, how, how old? So that was um, eight years ago, seven, seven, seven and a half years ago. Yeah. So he would have been like maths now. Yeah, um, six, six. So yeah, yeah. He's he's there, but he's not really like. He's just like, what's going on? I guess. Yeah, he's, I? he's thirteen now, so hopefully my yeah. maths correlate right. Well, like obviously, completely different level. Um, but Sienna came to my Welsh show this year, yeah, yeah. you know, because it was in, in Wales and yeah. all the family came. Yeah. Um, and it was just fucking, yeah, it was just like different. Because when we were, when I did the two bro show, it was just me and Carla up there yeah. with the guys, um, with the Stubbs guys that sponsored me. So they came up. But then in Wales, then she was there. Yeah. Um, she said she didn't, no, I'm not coming to the show. Yeah. You know, 13 year old girl, I'm not coming to watch a bodybuilding show and yeah. Carla's like yeah she doesn't want to go and watch you on stage in fucking pants and fake tan and pose and <laughs> that I'm like it's not that way I want you to yeah. come like but she ended up coming uh, and she loved it like yeah. she enjoyed it Good. so um, well my, my fifth one then on the back coming off the back of that is just to do 
again is to compete yeah. uh, and stand next to more people this yeah. year. That's a that's a big goal this year. Awesome. Uh, that's the only goal I've got really in terms of bodybuilding. I just do one more show than I did last year. Yeah. So three shows and stand next to more bodies and see how I do. Wicked. That's the five. You chose any shows, federations? Uh, NABA is definitely not happening for anyone. All the DMs I'm getting, all three of them. Uh, people are saying, are you going back to retain the title of Mr. Wales? I'm yeah. like, no. Yeah, it's yeah. like, because it's like early May, which means I would start, have to start prep probably the next four weeks. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm, I want to go in June and July. Yeah. So 12 weeks, I think prep starts. I, had a, I did have actually, um, I actually had a question on the DMs on Insta, when's prep starting? So prep starts on the 6th of March. And then I think 12 weeks then sees me into June. Yeah. And then I've got like a four-week window then of like up to 16 weeks where, because uh, I, I came in so quick last time. I, yeah. I, we didn't really know how quick I'd come in. And I came in and by, like my glutes were in by like 12 weeks. And then I had like eight weeks of holding, yeah. um, which was, was hard work. Like So we're going to allow ourselves like a four-week window then of yeah. being in condition and, and do a couple of shows. Definitely. The two bros... Um, Wales show is on the 2nd of July. So that right, falls yeah. right in the middle of like that window for me. Oh, wicked. So I'll probably do that. Perfect. Well, they're going to Wales, aren't they? Yes. Entering out of London. Yeah, Richie O'Donnell's um, oh, right. co-promoter, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, RO coaching or RL coaching. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they're doing it. I'm not sure where in Wales. Um, but yeah, they, they're venturing out. I think they've only got two... They've got a few regionals, but I think there's only actual yeah. two physical regionals. I think one's in Wigan, yeah. and the other one is over in Wales. Yeah, yeah, cool. Happy days. So that's the five. Yeah. That takes us up to about 55 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Do we, a, do we bother doing any more, or should we just leave it at that? I think that's a good length Cause for we, uh, first one back. We're going to be blagging if we try and do top fives of everything else. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll, um, we'll wrap it up. Yeah, let's let's wrap it up with. I'm going to leave this. On I can see you thinking the, about something on there the, on the top five goats of all time. Oh. All sports, just open, open <laughs> top five goats of all time. Is it between us? Yeah, yeah, I think so. We'll do like we we'll won each then. One each. Well, so should we go top six, three each? T- three each. Yeah, top five plus one. A bonus one. <laughs> yeah. A Brucey bonus. <laughs> you first. I'm going to go with fucking Jordan and I. Yeah. I'll go Tiger Woods. Okay. Michael Jackson. I was going to say Michael Jackson. <laughs> I was going to say... I'm not Michael Jackson. I was going to say MJ. <laughs> oh, God. Yes. Right. I could go completely off topic now, but I won't, because it's like my mind, like, swirling in different directions. Go for it, man. So I was thinking, right, the other day, I sat chatting to Katie, and we, like, have all these conversations about conspiracy theories and this and that so everybody labelled Michael Jackson as a paedophile right yeah but what if he was actually telling the truth what if he was actually trying to protect the kids because there's all that um, information come out about the Hollywood being this underground the, the ring of fucking ring of paedophiles mm, yeah so what if he was the protector and all these guys were just he was an easy target because of the way he looked as being this paedophile this fucking weirdo guy yeah yeah do you remember, because we're on this, you know when COVID was going on, yeah. did you ever see the thing, right, about Tom Hanks? Yeah. Because he's still killing it. He's still in all these new films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched um, Elvis the other day, because you watched that on a plane, yeah. I think, and yeah, you said yeah. it was good. So Crazy, I watched yeah. good film there. Yeah. But I thought, fucking Tom Hanks is still in films and he's a pedo. Yeah. I don't know if he's a pedo, it's but like that's the rumour, isn't it? Kevin Spacey. A lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> Did you hear about one of our, um, Michelle Obama's a man? No, I didn't hear that yeah, one. Apparently, Michelle Obama's a man. Is she? <laughs> yeah. There's loads, isn't there? I think it's called, is it Pizzagate? Pizzagate, yeah, oh, yeah. Hopefully, we don't get banned. The fucking, uh, the, what was it a pink glove or pink sock with Tom Hanks? Yeah. There was like, he was putting pictures of pink socks. Yeah. on just a, a random pink sock on a wall. Yeah. Someone, if you know, comment below. Uh, and that is like a sign for like the pedo crew. Yeah, because it's something to do with like Walt Disney as well and Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Oh man, it goes deep. Fucking to be honest with you, Katie says she wants to come on the podcast. 
Does she? My mum, my mum says she wants to come on the podcast. Really? Yeah, and uh, I just thought that could be bad for me. <clears throat> but we could have some interesting conversations because uh, Katie's like pretty deep on all this kind of stuff. We wouldn't get a word in with Katie. We would, would we? No. We'll have to have a wives edition. Carla think, probably sitting there just fucking laughing. Yeah, we might just like chill, just have a cigar or something. <laughs> Uh, it'll probably just end up being like we were in JP's where they're fucking just chatting shit about us and we yeah. just stand in there fucking yeah. so you went Michael Jackson <clears throat> yeah uh, I'm going to go David Beckham David Beckham okay and you said Tiger Woods didn't you I said Tiger Woods so we got Michael Jordan Tiger Woods Michael Jackson would you David Beckham yeah I need to come off music I'm just thinking of musicians now and artists Need to go back to sport. I've got a few. My mind's like thinking this, that. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. I'm going to have to cut these little fucking gaps out. <laughs> so it doesn't... <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't make you look shit? Yeah, so it doesn't make me look oh, shit. I don't think... Uh, any, any Welsh OGs in anything? I don't want to do bodybuilder. Yeah. Because it's too easy. Oh, I like flex, yeah. Yeah, because we, yeah. you know. There's a lot of goats in bodybuilding. <clears throat> uh, and it's funny how when I said the goats of all sports, I didn't think of bodybuilders. Yeah. It crossed my mind. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Steven Spielberg. Oh, yes. I like it. That's a good one. Um, I thought of two. Oh, yeah. So I thought of Joe Rogan, the goat of the podcast. Yeah. He's been doing it long enough, I think. Yeah, he's, he's up there, isn't he? He's been around for a long time. But then there was Mike Tyson as well. Yeah. Mike Tyson, best body, uh, boxer of, of all time in his, in his era. Like, he was the youngest. Oh, he's just a fucking animal. Wasn't yeah, he? yeah. So I think that'll do. Is that six? That was seven, actually, with Mike Tyson as well. Do you want to put another one in No, there. you saved my ass, there, bro. <laughs> and the time is about to go off, so... Sweet. That is episode number five. Peace then, out. see you in the next one. Awesome.